from extensive cave systems whose bounds are rumored to harbor restless spirits resulting from tragedies that played out within centuries past, to abandoned insane asylums where the tortured ghosts of former patients whose lives were stolen from them on site remain trapped. Are you ready to brave our third list of picks for some of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania? Number 5. The John Bonnet Tavern the John Bonnet Tavern, also recognized as the Old Forks Inn, or more simply as Bonnet's Tavern, and located off of the junction of US Highway 30 and State Route 31 out of Bedford, Pennsylvania, is a local landmark famous for acting as site to the 1794 Whiskey Rebellion. Historically speaking, earliest British documentation paints land now holding the tavern as originally owned under one Robert Callender, a trader with the Native American tribes of Pennsylvania. In 1763, Callender would construct a large stone structure on site, purposed to host a French fort and trading post, while also providing shelter to those settlers passing through. In 1779, this land and structure were purchased under John Bonnet, who would open the expanse as an inn and tavern that would later act as a meeting place to members of the 1794 Whiskey Rebellion, which protested a federal tax on whiskey. Incidentally, soldiers under George Washington would also camp on site en route to quell resulting fighting. Over its many years, this weathered property has changed hands a number of times, though it's namely been maintained as a tavern and inn with private residential space. In the present, the John Bonnet Tavern remains in operation, offering comfortable accommodations alongside unparalleled food and drink options. While it's unknown exactly who or what haunts this aged premises, some believe activity is quite simply a result of the many souls connected to its bounds in lives since past, and both staff and visitors to the tavern have reported doors that open and close on their own, the constant feelings of being watched or of being followed by someone unseen, disembodied voices and footsteps heard from vacant rooms, and instances of the piano playing on its own. Extreme cold spots are felt through the heat of summer. The sounds of a woman's high heels are often heard tapping across empty floor space. Objects have been sighted floating in midair, and the manifestation of a boy roughly 10 years in age has been spied carrying a bucket through the dining room area before vanishing in the blink of an eye. Lastly, the ghostly figure of a man has been observed sitting at the bar occasionally, often enjoying a drink when the building is closed and locked up for the night. This is believed to be the spirit of Benet himself, returning to his tavern for one final round. Number 4. Penn's Cave and Wildlife Park Penn's Cave and Wildlife Park, located off of Penn's Cave Road out of Gregg Township in Pennsylvania, is a historic lodging turned popular wildlife expanse that boasts the title of being the only all-water cavern and farm nature wildlife park in the whole of America. Historically, in 1885, the three-story, mansard roof-clad Penn's Cave House was initially constructed as a private farm abode, and later, in 1908, brothers Henry Clay and Robert Purley Campbell would purchase the site along with this early farm, after which Robert, joined by his wife Edith and their children, would reside at the house-turned-lodging while hosting overnight guests until 1919. From 1920 until 1929, cavern visitors would be offered meals, while the former residence and hotel space would be utilized as a gift shop and ticket center. In 1938 and again in 1960, the property would welcome a slew of remodels. In 1962, the rear wing of the structure would be constructed, and in 1980, the property would be converted to a private residence following the construction of a new visitor center. Penn's Cave and Wildlife Park remains open into the present, offering a range of cave and nature tours, options in gemstone panning, a maze, and a total of seven contributory buildings, two alternate contributory structures, and of course, its associated cave system. Chillingly, Penn's Cave is surrounded by an ages-old legend that tells of a beautiful Seneca maiden by the name of Natani, and of her lover, a French trapper by the name of Malachi Boyer. As this story goes, the two fell deeply in love at first sight. However, when they expressed their desires under Seneca custom, Natani's chief forbade them to marry. Determined to spend their lives together, Natani and Malachi would run away together, but unfortunately, they were swiftly captured, and Malachi was thrown into the cave 
cave to die. To date, this expanse is surrounded by a number of ghost stories and spooky eyewitness accounts detailing encounters with the otherworldly, with those braving it reporting disembodied voices often in native dialects, heavy breathing felt on the back of the neck, and strange but fleeting visions. Ghostly, translucent figures have been spied floating above the cavern's looming entrance, suspended in the air, some say offering protective warding to those who pass into its depths, while tour guides commonly report hearing the sobs of what just may be the spirit of Natani, followed by the responding cries of Malachi calling out to her from the dark. Number 3. The Betsy Ross House the Betsy Ross House, located off of Arch Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is a historic landmark purported to have hosted seamstress and flag maker Betsy Ross during the time she is said to have sewed the first American flag. Historically, by 1740, the front portion of this aged structure was completed in what was called Pennsylvania colonial style. Over the next two decades, the stair hall was added, and theoretically, had Betsy Ross resided on site, she likely would have done so from around the time of her first husband, John Ross's death in 1776 until around 1779. Over subsequent years, the property would serve a number of both business residential purposes, including the hosting of a shoemaker, of a drugstore, of a tailor, of a cigar shop, and even a short stint as a tavern. Through the 1870s, the Mund family would acquire the site and would capitalize on its history by way of setting a sign in front that read, First Flag of the U.S. Made in This House. And after looming threats involving its demolition or reutilization, in 1937, the residence was saved in fully restored under a group of concerned locals. In 1941, the property was acquired under the city of Philadelphia. In 1965, the site would welcome the addition of an annex, and in 1974, the abode's courtyard would be fully renovated and would see the installation of its fountain. The Betsy Ross House remains open into the present, offering a range of educational materials, ample event space, and touring options for any with an interest. Quite classically, the whole of this weathered abode is rumored to harbor the spirits of those connected to its bounds in lives since past, and those who have braved it have reported disembodied voices, footsteps, and moaning heard emanating from empty spaces, instances of doors and windows opening and closing on their own, extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather, and objects spotted floating inexplicably through the air. Those who have explored the parlor have described feeling a constant, heavy, and almost foreboding presence, while disembodied voices, thumping, and dragging noises have been heard emanating from the basement and in the attic, which now holds the director's office and where it's documented a former owner passed on. A prior director actually reported feeling an invisible hand grab her shoulder roughly. One more famous documentation from 1980 tells of two security guards who were involved in a confrontation in the basement of the gift shop that resulted in one of the guards drawing his firearm and shooting the other three times, after which he left the man right where he fell to succumb to his wounds slowly through the night. Since this tragedy, those who have neared the point at which the murder took place have reported hearing the phantom sounds of an argument, often coupled with a ghostly gunshot and extreme chills. Lastly, the spirit of Betsy Ross herself has been encountered across abode grounds, often tending small tasks from life or manifesting suddenly to sob at the sight of a bed in the basement, some say, as her soul forever mourns the loss of her husband and daughter. Number 2. Pinhurst State School and Hospital Pinhurst State School and Hospital, located off of Commonwealth Drive out of Spring City, Pennsylvania, is an abandoned medical complex shrouded in infamy that was closed only after 79 years of overcrowded, underfunded, and downright abusive operation. Historically, in 1903, establishment of what was to be called the Eastern State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic was authorized under the Pennsylvania Legislature, though this name would later be revised to Pinhurst State School and Hospital. Hospital, and from 1903 to 1908, some of its earliest structures were erected. The hospital's first patient, or patient number one, would be admitted on November 23rd of 1908, and within four years, following the admittance of immigrants, orphans, and of the criminally insane, the institution's populace would grow to the point at which it was already facing overcrowding, after which conditions would continue to decline rapidly. In 1968, in a five-part television report under local WCAU-TV's Bill Baldini, Pinhurst's subhuman conditions were first exposed on a large scale 
scale. In 1981, it would be described as having a history of being understaffed, dirty, and violent by none other than Time magazine. And just two years following, in 1983, nine asylum employees were indicted on charges ranging from beatings to arranging patient-on-patient -patient fights. Pinhurst's operations would finally be ceased in 1987, after which sections of its campus were transformed into a veteran's home. In the present, while some of the property has since been renovated, much remains abandoned. The tours are available, and for those with a more morbid interest, through the Halloween season, the old admin building hosts the legendary Pinhurst Asylum haunted attraction. While this all may seem nothing more than good fun and games, rather disturbingly, Pinhurst is purportedly surrounded by a number of very real paranormal infestations. As previously mentioned, treatment of patients was nigh unimaginable, with abusive staff so overworked they'd end up resorting to drugging or chaining individuals they couldn't manage, completely secluding others for periods of time that resulted in severe regression, and even in the loss of their very wills to live, and had rules in place that if a patient bit someone else, on more than one occasion, which, as any current career counselor or therapist listening to this upload can tell you, is a pretty common and forgivable occurrence in such a setting, said patients would be sent to a company dentist to have all of their teeth removed. Chillingly, the very dentist chair utilized in the removal of likely tens of thousands of such teeth still remains in the tunnels beneath the complex. Incidentally, this torturous past combined with whatever other unimaginable horrors might have transpired is believed to have left a lasting scar, and those who have braved Pinhurst's grounds into the present have reported disembodied voices, screaming, and footsteps heard from empty spaces, instances of doors opening and closing on their own, objects spied inexplicably floating in midair, and the feelings of being watched or followed, or even of being touched, grabbed, or pushed by a presence unseen. Several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded spine-tingling EVPs, high EMF levels, and both orbs and shadowy figures in the backgrounds of photography and video, while a handful of accounts tell of run-ins with spectral doctors, nurses, or patients, many of whom appear sick and malnourished, and of instances in which those exploring asylum grounds have later discovered scratch marks, bruises, or even deep cuts on their persons. Lastly, several more modern caretakers have told of encounters with an ominous presence that lurks in the underground tunnels, while the entities of a group of children have been both seen and heard crying out for help from any who pass. Number 1. The Allegheny County Family Division the Allegheny County Family Division, or officially the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas Family Division, and located off of Ross Street out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is a prominent legal campus housed within the old Allegheny County Jail, which, along with the Allegheny County Courthouse, comprises a portion of a complex designed under H. H. Richardson that's widely considered one of the most significant examples of Romanesque revival style in existence. Historically, this former lockup was first constructed between 1884 and 1886 under the Brothers Norcross, and in 1888, the courthouse, which is linked to the old jail building by way of Bridge over Ross Street, was finished under the supervision of Shepley, Rutan, and Coolidge. Notably, in 1892, anarchist Alexander Berkman would be imprisoned on site while awaiting his trial for the attempted murder of prominent industrialist H. C. Frick, and even more notably, in 1902, infamous bandit brothers Jack and Ed Biddle would escape from the lockup with the assistance of the warden's wife. From 1903 to 1905, several additions to the structure were made under Frederick J. Osterling. In 1972, both the jail and courthouse were added to the list of the City of Pittsburgh Historic Designations, and in 1976, the site was honored as a National Historic Landmark. In 1995, a new jail site was established, after which jail operations were ceased on site, and the old compound would be utilized instead as the Allegheny County Family Division. The property remains open into the present, serving the county court system, while offering a museum dedicated to the history of the building and to the lockup. Disturbingly, during its time as a jail, 58 hangings would transpire within the division building, and this, coupled with the many who were lost to other inns while serving time, is believed to have left lasting paranormal infestations, with those frequenting sight bounds telling of extreme cold spots in adverse weather, of disembodied voices heard from empty rooms, and of spectral silhouettes spied swaying from the rafters after dark. 
One infamous fable intertwines with history to tell of William Culp, who, in 1907, and while awaiting trial for the murder of his brother in a brawl, took his own life within the old jail. Perturbingly, it's told that from that night forward, from about 12 to 1 in the morning, William's ghost would begin making repeat appearances shortly after his passing to reenact his brother's murder time and time again. An occurrence that proved so disturbing, following a bout of complaints, the acting warden would actually end up moving the entire death row to a different section of the jail out of pity. And while the jail and death row are now long gone, these age-old stories do live on. Several informal investigations of the property have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and odd anomalies captured in photography, while others have told of encounters with ominous, shadowy manifestations that have so much as chased any living present from the area. By far the most famous story associated with this weathered haunt surrounds the aforementioned Biddle brothers, Ed and Jack, who were arrested following a robbery spree under the guise of the Chloroform Gang, which, as one might imagine, consisted of the duo literally chloroforming their victims and robbing them blind while they slept the drug off, and later, for the alleged murder of a shopkeeper. At the prison, Kate Soffel, wife to Warden Peter Soffel, worked closely to rehabilitate inmates and would end up falling head over heels for the roguishly handsome Ed, after which she would sneak the brothers' guns and saws in a moment we're certain was nothing short of the big screen. At around 4 in the morning on January 29th of 1902, jail guards responded to one of the brothers calling out that the other was very ill and needed help. After falling for this classic ruse and approaching the cell, Jack Biddle would lunge through bars already cut and would send a first guard toppling over the railing to face injuries 16 feet below, while Ed would use a revolver to maim a second encroaching guard, preceding which the brothers would incapacitate a third guard and would lock all three into what was known as the dungeon to await discovery by the following shift staff at 6 a.m. Days following, the brothers, accompanied by Mrs. Soffel, would attempt to flee on sled, but would be cut off in Butler by authorities hot on their trail. While many largely accept that a shootout then ensued that resulted in the outlaws being gunned down by the righteous hand of the law, today, historians aren't so certain that's how it played out, as accounts from a dying Jack claim that all three saw the authorities approaching and decided to take their own lives by shooting themselves, as they never intended to kill anyone further supporting this claim until their last breaths, which would come shortly following this altercation, the Biddle brothers would maintain their professed innocence, and incidentally, it is notable that their chloroform heist was intended to be a non-violent means by which to separate their marks from their goods, and also that they made no poles towards killing guards during their earlier escape. Furthermore, later reports would document Jack's body as being riddled with buckshot, which strikes many as odd as no authorities were armed with scatterguns of the type at the time and were only documented as carrying revolvers and rifles. Subsequently, Kate, who some now suspect attempted to shoot herself in the heart but instead hit a wrong angle through breast tissue and who actually survived long enough to be divorced by a freshly unemployed Peter Soffel and even into her later years, maintained the brothers' claims as well. To date, a range of supernatural phenomena experienced on site is believed to stem from this infamous event, with those frequenting the family division building reporting observing a spectral silhouette matching Kate's description, who wanders about, shuffling papers and tapping the living on the shoulder, some say as she searches for Ed, and a slew of articles from the early 20th century detail run-ins with the full-bodied apparitions of the Biddle brothers themselves, always donning charming smiles and fire in their eyes as they play out their legendary getaway into a Eternity. Taking its fascinating and ridiculously absurd history into account and coupling it with such a formidable range of purported paranormal activity and associated local legends, we felt the Allegheny County Family Division was the perfect choice as this list's most haunted place in Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us for our third list of picks for some of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with all of your friends. We'll catch you next time.